Thank you for joining us today. I'm Danielle Fagazi, a contributing editor with American Banker. I'm joined by Ron, Chief Technology Officer of Banking, Financial Services, and the Insurance Unit at Tata Consultancy Services, otherwise known as TCS. We're here to talk about innovation in banking. Ron, thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Daniel. So let's get right into this. Why is innovation important to banking? And what does innovation actually mean to banking? Across all lines of business, to make banking incident to life, I think that is what's the function of innovation. Removing any friction while people conduct their lives. And why is innovation important to banking? Yeah, I think thanks to technology, banking is now not restricted only to traditional high street competition, but also to the non-traditional competition like the neo-digital banks, the big techs who are leveraging technology to push the boundaries of banking per se. Regulators across the world are also exploring, understanding the technology and trying not only to see what does it mean from a regulation perspective, but also trying to see how the technology can be leveraged for the regulation per se. Security threats are also pushing the boundaries. Digital adoption has accelerated in the past year quite significantly that I would not be surprised that if in the near future, even some of these smaller and the larger banks realize a majority of their business through digital only channels. This means innovation is even more important than any time before. So how do you create a culture of innovation? Do you have any examples of how you foster that culture within the banking community? Yes, I think the first thing is innovation should not be restricted to a team sitting in the corner of the organization. To me, innovation culture meaning means that getting everyone in the organization participate in the innovation journey. That's a very exciting one. It helps tap the latent energy as well as the knowledge within the enterprise while keeping the innovation spirit high. The best of the ideas come from people who are closer to the product, the process, and of course, the customer. Tools like Ideathon and Hackathon as well as crowdsourcing not only bring the best of ideas, but also can build a very, very healthy pipeline of good ideas. Innovative ideas, awards like Dare to Try, ensure that failures are not penalized, but encouraged in some way. So let's say now you do have the ideas and you have the culture. What then are the impediments to realization of success? And is there anything that TCS brings that can help realize good outcomes in a systematic way? In uh, Daniel, I think in most organizations, there is no dearth of ideas, right? The problem comes in idea to execution translation, and that becomes a critical success factor in delivering innovation outcomes on a systematic way. There are two key issues. One, prioritizing the ideas based on your organizational vision. And number two is to translate these ideas to execution. Now, do you know that most of the organizations spend almost 80 to 90% of the, of the resources that they have, the bigger resources that they have on here and now issues? When you end up doing that, there is, a, there is a risk of being blindsided by new market innovations that you have not even considered. Now, what, what did we do to look at prioritizing the ideas? We used something called a Clayton. We, we took help from Professor Clayton Christensen. Right, to conjure up what is called as a clay map, right? a representation that takes into consideration customer capabilities as well as customer markets and positioning among other things. That helps us as well as the banks to get a good handle on how to distribute the available resources. Now, coming to the translation of ideas, once you have the ideas prioritized, there has to be a systematic way in which you translate these ideas on a 30, 60, 90 day cycle to realize the minimum viable product, right? And then once they are successful, translate that into production. If they are, fa if they are failures, then you learn from the failures and go ahead and continue on with your other exercises. There is also an important thing to tap the underlying ecosystem that is available beyond the enterprise. Not so long ago, we were looking at 
how do we foster culture this when we worked with the european bank we wanted to look at how do you set up a new bank in 8 weeks we took this challenge worked with a team and stood up a completely new bank in 8 weeks time so when people think about innovative industries they think about retail or travel they don't think about banking right now what would make banking as innovative as some of those other industries like travel or retail yeah i think uh, banking is very regulated and for the right reason right and i feel that comparing it with uh, retail and travel has merits we have a lot to learn from these industries and probably up the ante but there is merit we can only push the boundaries to a certain extent to speed up innovation in banking i think there are three or four things that we need to look at one foster an innovation culture within the bank to tap the organizational latent energy have a focused mechanism to collate the ideas a tools to help prioritize these ideas make sure that there is a mechanism to rapidly translate these ideas to execution tapping the ecosystem and finally a culture which does not penalize failure ram thank you so much for sharing your insights with us today and thank you for joining us thank you danil happy to be here today